The blue crab, Latin name Calinectes sapidus, represents an important sector of the U.S. fishing industry, and Louisiana is the nation's top producer of blue crabs. In 2013, more than 39 million pounds of blue crab were landed in the state with a value of more than $51 million. In 2012, approximately 178 metric tons of softshell crabs were produced in the United States, valued at more than $1.8 million. Softshell crabs are a delicacy, and shedding a crab doubles its value. Prized for their flavor, unusual appearance, and meat yield, softshell crabs are cooked and eaten whole after the crab is cleaned of its gills and face. Softshell crabs may be sold live or frozen. Softshell crab production is a labor-intensive but rewarding endeavor. Gary Bauer of Ponch Train Blue Crab in Slidell, Louisiana, sells live crabs and crab meat in addition to producing softshell crabs. I like it. I just like playing with the crabs and, and looking at the crabs and it's enjoyable and it, it when when they're really shedding it comes a lot of work but it's really it's a different way to make money as a fisherman and uh, really satisfying to look at the at the morning after a good night and you see you got 12 15 18 dozen of soft shell crabs that's becoming a delicacy on the market and in great demand there is a demand for a product of the USA, fresh, alive, soft shells. Crabs are invertebrates with hard exoskeletons, and the average blue crab will live for three years. As the animal grows, it must shed its old shell. A crab responds to the lack of growth space within its shell by entering the premolt stage, commonly known as the peeler or buster stage. This stage is marked by color changes on the crab's paddle. I try to limit it to 10 days to two weeks out, which that is a white line. We look at the back fin and there'll be like a, a white line up against the edge of the back fin. And then as that crab gets closer within three to four days, it'll turn pink. And then right before it sheds, it turns dark red. And that means the crab's gonna shed within a day or two. And then when underneath the points, you'll feel that the shell is cracking as that crab is entering its molting stage it's cracked underneath and that's the shell opening up for the whole new shell of the crab to come out. At this point the crab can absorb more water and ions into its circulatory system dramatically swelling its body to crack the hard shell. Once it backs out of the old shell or molts the animal swells its bigger body with water. Crabs remain in a soft stage for only a brief time after molting. They must be removed from the water after they discard the shell they have outgrown, but before the new underlying shell hardens. This is why they must be examined every few hours. An average crab will shed 20 to 25 times in its lifetime. The easiest thing is just to get them out of the water and then um, to extend the shelf life of the product. Once you take, take it out of the water, get it in a, a tray and get it in a refrigeration. Some people wrap them, some people clean them and wrap them, and some restaurants only want to buy fresh. So there's three different ways to sell them. The best way that I was able to sell them when I had a lot of them was to get them as they were shedding, clean them, and bag them and fact pack them. And that is the best product in the world. You defrost those, and it, it, if you put them in super fresh, when you defrost them, they taste just like they went in. Soft shells are produced from wild-caught crabs. 91% of pre-molt crabs, often called redliners, peelers or busters, will molt within three days. Pre-molt crabs are obtained in different ways, such as an incidental bycatch from shrimp trawling or by hand collection or dip netting. Other methods specifically target pre-molt crabs and rely on hormonal attractions or providing the reclusive pre-molt crab with a place to hide in bush lines or crab pounds. However, most peelers are caught with ordinary crab pots. The animals that show signs of an impending molt are separated from the regular catch, then held and monitored in shallow fiberglass tanks. At one time we had 16 tanks after Katrina. We uh, lost everything, so we paired back to about four, the four tanks that we got from a uh, Sea Grant program. An average fisherman is going to um, shed soft shell crabs. He uh, needs a minimum of four tanks. Um, one for the red liners, one for the closer crabs, and then two for the far off crabs. And you want to separate the close crabs, the ones that are going to shed within a day to two days, from the far off crabs because when they get so close to shedding, they quit eating. 
but the other ones keep eating and they're cannibalistic. So if a red line is mixed in with the far off crabs, you're going to lose that crab. All the other crabs are hungry. They're going to eat the little crab as he sheds and I know that from past experience. The soft shell blue crab industry began in the Gulf of Mexico around 1887. In Louisiana, soft shell blue crabs were originally shed in and around Lake Pontchartrain in floating boxes. The soft shell industry slowly spread across the state and into shedding facilities in the 1960s. Shedding facilities replaced floating boxes. There are two basic types of systems in use today open flow-through systems and closed recirculating systems. Open flow-through systems are the type most commonly found in the Gulf region. Open flow-through systems rely on surface water and by necessity are located along bayous or water bodies like Lake Pontchartrain. Pumps draw water from the waterway, run it through the tanks, and then discharge it back into the environment. We use water right out of uh, Pirates Harbor, which is we're about two blocks off of Lake Pontchartrain. So uh, unless we get a severe rain, the water quality here is, is pretty good. Um, you can also get plans from Sea Grant people to build a, a flow through, I mean a, a filter system. And uh, that works pretty good. When I was a fisherman, I used that for a number of years with, with pretty good success. Closed recirculating systems use well water or a municipal water supply. This water must be mechanically and biologically filtered and salinated in order to support the blue crabs. Here is an example of a filter at work in a recirculating system at Delcom Crab House. The type of system to choose depends on several factors. Open flow through systems obviously must be located near a suitable water body with a salinity sufficient to sustain blue crabs. Though they may be located anywhere, recirculating systems can be trickier to maintain. Both require shade to protect the crabs and a power supply to operate the pumps. It's very minimal, four tanks, one uh, pump, which I think is a uh, half horsepower swimming pool pump. and. Uh, some lights. Uh, the main thing is if you shed a bunch of crabs, they generally shed mostly through the night. So someone has got to get up around midnight and check the crabs and then get them in, in, into a refrigerator so they don't harden. Can't leave. If, you, if you miss checking your tanks at night, those crabs, by the time you come at daybreak or a little before daybreak, they'll be paper shell and it will be, we have no value on the market. As the water gets uh, hotter, um, you need to check them at least every four hours. Um, if it's cool, you can get by with every six hours. So if you sit, check them at six in the evening, you can make it out at midnight, and then you don't have to check them again till four. In the, I mean, six in the morning. But um, when it's hot and you have a lot of crabs in there, uh, you need to check them. You know, at eight, and then midnight, and then again at four o'clock in the morning. Aside from monitoring the crabs so that they are removed from the water at the appropriate stage, softshell producers must be attentive to water quality parameters such as salinity, dissolved oxygen, ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, and temperature. The risk of disease and the added stress that captivity places on the animals are also a practical and financial concern. This valuable food industry is dependent on mortality rates at shedding facilities, and an estimated 23% of pre-molt crabs die within five days of being held at the facilities. Some people keep them out, they say they can tell a crab three to four weeks out, and I find most of those crabs will stay alive in your tank and then right before they molt, they're so stressed from being in the tanks that long, they're weak and they die while they're trying to molt. In the Gulf, the peak season for shedding is from March to October when warm water temperatures stimulate frequent molting. Within this season, softshell crabs are most abundant during peak molting periods in April or May and in September or October. A lot of people lost their systems with Hurricanes Katrina, Rita, Gustav, and Ike. Although the, the states help uh, replace tanks, the production of softshell crabs hasn't recovered. If you're lucky to have red liners and uh, pre moat crabs in your traps, um, that's uh, extra money that you're sitting on right there.